If you head onto social media and type in League Earn, it's not hard to find several people calling it a farmer's league. Only recently, the Lionel Messi fan club have busted out the phrase in droves, furious that PSG fans had the audacity to boo the Argentine maestro against Bordeaux. The insult claims that Ligue 1 is a division of semi-professional footballers who farm in the day and play football in the night. In short, it's an allegation that the French top flight isn't up to scratch. Champions on seven occasions since 2012, their overwhelming success and Qatari wealth has often cast a shadow on their domestic rivals who struggle for recognition or respect. Le Parisien's own failings in the Champions League have emboldened league earned critics too, with the club being dumped out of the last 16 four times in the past six years. But is there actually any evidence to suggest league earned suffers from a lack of quality? Or is the Farmers League moniker a lazy joke that's run out of comedic value? This week on Euro Football Daily Explains, we decided to cross the English Channel and find out. Let's start with one of the main criticisms of League Earn, its performances on the European stage. And truth be told, beyond PSG's own difficulties, there isn't a wealth of success to discuss. Stad Rance and San Etienne both produced finalists back in the 50s and 70s, along with Marseille in 91 and Monaco in 2004, but they all ended up on the losing side. There have been some highs this century, including Monaco's magical run to the semis in 2017, plus two appearances in the last four for Lyon, which featured a shock win over Manchester City in the 1920 quarterfinal. That game prompted Kylian Mbappe to tweet Farmers League, followed by a clown emoji in retaliation to the division's sceptics. But since then, French sides have continued to suffer on the continent. This season, Monaco failed to join Lille and PSG in the Champions League group stages after losing to Shakhtar Donetsk in qualifying, sending them into the Europa League where Ligue 1 has also struggled. Since it began back in 71 as the UEFA Cup, France has never produced a winner. Marseille have been runners-up on three occasions, most recently in 2018 when of course they lost to Atletico Madrid, but aside from Marseille, just Bordeaux and Bastia have reached the showpiece event. The last of those came in 1996 too, when Bordeaux were beaten by Bayern Munich. Meanwhile, the likes of England and Spain have dominated the competition. Since the turn of the century, Sevilla have won the Europa League a record five times, Atletico three times, whilst Valencia and Villarreal have both tasted glory. In that period, United, Liverpool and Chelsea have been the English winners, Porto of Portugal have won it twice, and even Russia has produced two champions in Zenit and CSK Moscow. In the 2019-20 season, Ren and San Etienne both failed to get out of the group stage, while last season there wasn't a single French side in the last 16. In fact, France's general performance in European competition was so poor, it gained just 7.9 points as per UEFA's coefficient ranking. That is, of course, the measure which dictates the strength of Europe's domestic leagues. This was worse than Portugal, the Netherlands and Scotland, and only marginally better than Ukraine, Austria and Israel. Portugal is now less than six points behind France in the overall rankings, with the Primera Liga threatening to take on Ligue 1's mantle as one of the continent's big five divisions. Should Portugal catch them, they will take one of France's qualification spots for the Europa League in place of a Conference League position. And let's face it, nobody wants that. Ligue 1 matches Syria and beats the Bundesliga in terms of their number of European finalists in the last six seasons. And as we'll explore, that is despite the odds being stacked against the French domestic game. The other major sticking point people have with Liga is PSG's domination, but once again, the situation isn't much better in Italy or in Germany. Bayern Munich are on course to win their 10th straight Bundesliga title, whilst Juventus have claimed the Scudetto in 9 of the past 10 seasons. That is despite facing what many consider to be tougher domestic opposition, yet the idea that French clubs should be able to compete with Paris Saint-Germain on paper is almost comical. Since Qatar Sports investment arrived in the French capital, over 1.3 billion euros has been spent on transforming the squad into one of Europe's finest. In 1920, Deloitte revealed that PSG had the sixth highest income of any club in the world with a yearly turnover of 541 million euros. Their total wage bill of 260 million per year was over five times larger than Marseille. In fact, their annual operating budget of half a billion euros dwarfs the 20 million euros the newly promoted Clermont can spend. For context, all three of the Premier League's promoted sides spent over 30 million pounds on player transfers alone this season. 
There are plenty of rich owners in France. Rennes, Nice, Marseille and Monaco are all under the control of billionaires and Troyes falls under the City Football Group remit. But with French football in a precarious financial position, spending to the same levels as PSG just simply isn't possible. A botched broadcasting deal with Media Pro, plus the devastating impact of the global pandemic hit Ligue 1 hard, with agency France Press reporting that losses exceeded 1.3 billion euros across all clubs in the 2020-2021 season. PSG absorbed nearly a quarter of that, but have the full force of the Qatar Investment Authority's $300 billion worth of assets to help them out. It makes it even more remarkable that Monaco and Lille have won the title in recent years, relying on skill and smart acquisitions over brute force in the market. And the rest of Ligue 1 is more competitive than you might realise. Last season of the 20 team major European divisions, the gap between the bottom three and the top four was the narrowest in France at 36 points. In the Premier League, it was 39, in La Liga 43 and in Serie A, it was 45. And that competitiveness has continued this term. After 28 rounds of fixtures, neither of the two promoted sides, Troyes or Clermont, are in the relegation zone. And just seven points separate the bottom seven clubs, again, the narrowest margin in the major leagues. Meanwhile, just five points is the difference between Lille in sixth and Montpellier in 11th. Reflected elsewhere, West Ham are 15 points clear of Crystal Palace, Roma 13 points ahead of Torino, and Real Sociedad 12 points above Osasuna. The teams in the bottom half often take points off the teams in the top half, allowing the Parisians to just push ahead. Take Nice, for example, currently third and unbeaten against PSG this term. Five of their seven defeats have come against teams fighting relegation. Meanwhile, 16th place Clermont have beaten four of the top six. It might not always seem like it, but there's plenty of drama in Ligue 1 that you simply don't find elsewhere. It's also conveniently forgotten just how much talent is being produced and nurtured across the division. No division in Europe's major leagues hands a higher percentage of minutes to under-21s, and often they catch the eye. Eduardo Camavinga earned a dream move from Rennes to Real Madrid last summer, while Rant striker Hugo Ekatike was the subject of bids worth north of £30 million from a Newcastle side, who ended up spending £38 million quid on another league gun player, Lyon's Bruno Guimaraes. Lille have also sold 12 separate players for over £10 million between 2016 and 2021, including Nicolas Pepe and Victor Osimhen, who banked them a remarkable £135 million. Quid. Sven Botman and Renato Sanchez are likely to be next too. It goes without saying that some of the very best players in the Premier League and beyond have passed through a French system. According to the International Centre for Sports Studies, only Brazil has a greater foreign contingent in the remainder of Europe's elite Big Five leagues than France. What's more, 16 of the 40 clubs that turned a profit in the market since 2016 from this group are French, with Lille and Lyon amongst the biggest net gainers. Ligue 1's selling nature is partly down to the tough financial climate that has made player profits a valuable source of revenue. It's also worth noting how the annual fire sale of the division's best talent does little to help the club's efforts in European competition that we were speaking about earlier, with squads consistently being rebuilt. But that shouldn't detract from the quality still playing throughout the league and the future prospects in the making. As France's success on the international stage has shown, it is still amongst the very best. Ligue 1 has its issues starting with finances, however to call it a farmer's league is ignorance over intelligence. Once considered the best division in Europe behind Syria, there's no reason to suggest that in time it can't steer itself back towards its former glory. It's still comfortably the fifth highest grossing division in Europe by revenue ahead of the Russian Premier League, and a new 1.5 billion euro investment in Ligue de Football Professionnel from competing global equity groups should help stabilise its current economic concerns. Maybe then, finally, French clubs will be able to retain the extraordinary talent pool at its disposal and make further strides in European competition. Make no mistake, it's time that phrases like Farmers League were left in the murky depths of football Twitter where it belongs. So that was our explained looking at whether or not Ligue 1 is actually a Farmers League. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit subscribe. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you later.